Okay guys, today we're going to look at uh, the power dissipated in a load resistor with two voltage sources. Now we've got three elements here. Uh, we've got a load resistor and then we've got two voltage sources. Okay, so your circuit diagram looks a little bit like this. Where we have two voltage sources. Okay, each voltage source has an associated internal resistance and we have a load resistor. Okay, so just put some figures in here that uh, I can take you through this example. Okay, for this we need to use Kirchhoff's laws. Okay, so Kirchhoff's current law states the current flowing into a node equals the current flowing out. Okay, so a node is a connection of wires. So here is a node. So we are going to say here that first of all we're going to draw on this diagram our currents. Okay, so from this voltage source it's generating a current which is flowing through this resistor. So we're going to call that I1. I don't know what it is, so we'll just label it as I and then a small one for our first current. S same way, second voltage source is going to generate a voltage, or a, sorry, a current uh, traveling through the 5 ohm resistor. And then they meet in a node, and flowing out of the node then is our third current, which we are unaware of as yet. So we're going to calculate these three currents, but Kirchhoff's current law, as I stated, currents flowing in equals currents flowing out. Okay, so Kirchhoff's current law, what currents are flowing in? So we've got into the node we've got I1, into the node we've got I2, and out of the node we've got I3. So I'll write I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. What flows in equals what flows out. Okay, the next bit then is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Okay, Kirchhoff's voltage law. So here, uh, we're going to draw a loop here, because this is a closed off part of the circuit, this little square here. And I'll label it A, because we'll have two loops. So we'll label this one A, loop A. So Kirchhoff's voltage law, we've got a source voltage of 10 in this loop, and we have a voltage drop across these two resistors. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law is stating that the sum of these two, so if you add these two voltage drops together, equals 10 volts. So 10 volts equals the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor. Now voltage drop is given as the resistance 10 ohms multiplied by the current flowing through the resistor plus the voltage drop across this resistor 2 ohms and I3. So it's 2I3. Okay then the next one if I again label this one B for our second loop and we use Kirchhoff's voltage law again we've got a source this time of 5 volts and that's equal to these two voltage drops if you follow the circle around you're adding up the voltage drops as you go around the closed part of the circuit so it's going through the 5 ohm resistor and going through the 2 ohm resistor again so it's the 5 ohm times I2 so it's 5 I2 and it's the 2 ohm times I3. It's 2I3. Okay, now we've got all the information from this uh, circuit that we can. We're just going to combine these now. Okay, now this is where it gets a little tiny bit complicated. So we're going to take this uh, Kirchhoff's current law formula and instead of I3 in these two equations, we're going to replace the I3 with I1 plus I2. I replace the I3 with I1 plus I2. Okay, so if we take the first one, we've got 10 equals 10 I1 plus 2 times I1 plus I2. Okay, so we're replacing the I3 here with I1 plus I2. And if we multiply the bracket, 10 I1 plus 2 times I2 2 times I1 plus 2 times I2. And we have, then we've got uh, 10 is equal to, with 10 I1 and with 2 I1, add those together, you get 12 I1 plus 2 I2. Okay, so now we've tr converted this first equation from having I1 and I3 to now having I1 and I2. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the second equation here, this 5. Uh, volt equation. So 5 is equal to 5 times I2 plus 2 times I1 plus I2. 
So again, swapping the I3 in this equation, so swapping this I3 with I1 plus I2. So again, a line for multiplying out the brackets. We've got 2I1 plus 2I2. And then another line for simplifying. Now we've got these 2I2 ones. So 5I2 and with 2I2, that's 7I2. And this time we've got 2I1. Now it's nice to write them as your I1s and then your I2s, just because it makes like numerical sense. Right, 1 becomes before 2. So uh, 2I1 plus, and with 5I2, 2I2 gives 7I2. So what we have now is if I label this as equation 1 and this is equation 2, we have got two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. Equation 1 has got I1 and I2 in it and equation 2 has got I1 and I2 in it. Now when we have two equations like this, they're called simultaneous equations. Okay, it's a big word, but it's basically two equations with two unknown quantities in it. To be able to solve these equations, what you need to do it's because you've got different numbers in front of I1 in both of these, and you have different numbers in front of I2 in both of these, you need to try and get either the I1s or the I2s to be the same number. Okay, how do we do that? Well, what we do is, I'm going to look at this and say, we've got 12 I1 here, and we've got 2 I1 here. So how can I make this one read 12 I1? Okay, so I'm going to look at it and say, okay, 12 is 6 times bigger than 2. So if I'm able to multiply this equation by 6, this will read 12 I1. And we'll have the same number in front of I1 in both equations, which is what we want. So if I do here 2, equation 2 times 6. Okay, so if 5 times 6 gives 30, is equal to 2 times I1 times 6, so 2 times 6 is 12 I1, plus 7 times 6 is 42 I2. So now what we've got is an equation which has uh, I, 12 I1 plus 42 I2, and here we've got 12 I1 plus 2 I2. So if I take this equation and write it in below here, okay, so I'm not going to change it in any way, I'm just going to write it in below. Okay, so now we've got these two numbers are the same. We're going to subtract two equations from each other. Okay, so if we subtract the equations, you're subtracting the quantities in the corresponding positions. Okay, so we're going to do 30, take away 10, gives me 20. We've got 12i1, take away 12i1. Okay, that's going to be zero. So we've got rid of those. And we've got 42i2 plus 2i2. Well, that gives me 42 take away 2 gives me 40i2. So now we have a very much simplified formula of, I'm just going to try and leave it on the screen there, 20 is equal to 40i2. So 20 is equal to 40i2, therefore i2 must be 20 divided by 40, which is not 0.5 amps. 0.5 amps. Okay, so we've solved this for I2. Now to be able to find it for I1, all we do is substitute the, not, the number we know for I2, in this case is 0.5, back into one of our original formulas. Okay, I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to pick a formula 1. Okay, so if I pick formula 1, formula 1 stated that 10 is equal to 12 I1 plus 2 I2, but we know I2 is equal to 0.5. Okay, so I2 is equal to 0.5, so we can replace the I2 with 0.5. Okay, I like to put on a set of brackets and then 0.5 in the brackets. If we multiply out those brackets, 2 times 0.5 gives you 1. If we remove the 1 to the other side of the equation, we change the sign on it. Okay, we're taking this 1 to the other side of the equation, so it changes from plus 1 to minus 1. So 9 is equal to 12i1 
So I1 is equal to 9 divided by 12, which is 0.75 amps. Okay, so we have got 0.5 for I1, 0.75 for I2, and if we remember from our first formula, Kirchhoff's current law, I1 plus I2 is equal to I3, we can write I1 plus I2 equals I3. I1 is 0.75. I2 is 0.5 equals 1.25 amps. So we have found I3 also. Okay, now our original question was to find the power dissipated in the load resistor. Okay, there's one last formula we're going to look at for that, which is power is equal to current squared times resistance. Okay, so we have worked out that the power in the load resistor is equal to the current flowing through the load resistor, which we've worked out as I3, which is 1.25, squared, multiplied by the resistance of the load resistor, which was 2 ohms, and we get 1.5625 times 2. If you square 1.25, you get 1.5625. Multiplied by 2 gives us an answer of 3.125 watts. So to recap, what we have done is we had our circuit with two voltage sources and a load resistor. First of all, what we need to do is find the current flowing through the load resistor, and for that we generate our simultaneous equations. You solve your simultaneous equations using and using Kirchhoff's current law, we can get the answer for I3, the current flowing through the load resistor. And if we know the current flowing through the load resistor and the value of the load resistance, we can use our power is equal to current time squared times resistance to find the power dissipated in the load resistor. So that's us done. Uh, tune in next time for some more cool maths.